So when I first became a statistics major, I was definitely surprised by how much programming or coding was in statistics. And though it came as a surprise at first, it definitely became a love of mine towards the end of my statistics degree. But how much coding or programming actually goes into a statistics degree? Well, as always, with most answers, it depends. So what does it depend on? Well, it really depends on what your focus is in statistics. So mine was an applied statistics degree. So in applied statistics, you're often focused on a certain realm. Mine's in business information systems, but your focus could be in health or physics or economics or really anything you want. So when you get into your job, you're, of course, going to be using different programs, especially depending on what your job is and what that realm of focus is. All right, so here I pulled up the applied statistics option at my university. So if you scroll through these classes, I'm going to go through each of those, and I'll tell you exactly which classes are involving a little bit of programming or a little bit of coding. Though there's not a lot of them, there's different options of statistics at my university, so I'm going to go through three of those. So the first class that's going to involve a little bit of programming is STAT 184, and that's just an introduction to R. So at my university, we mainly use R for any of the statistics we're doing. We might use a little bit of Python, a little bit of SQL, a little bit of Excel VBA. But outside of those, it's really mainly R. We do have a class focused on SAS, but still. So this is that first class where you begin to use R, and you're definitely going to be using some programming. This class is a great background in R. It gives you the, all the introduction. Like You don't need any background in R before you take this class. So it's a great intro to the uh, topic. And even though I took it actually at the end of my uh, schooling career, it would have been so much more beneficial at the beginning. So if your university has an option to take a class like this, definitely take that if you think that's going to be something that you're going to do. Now, when I went through school, there was a little bit different setup for these different classes. We actually had a regression class, but here it's called Statistical Modeling 1. So you can see that this course will emphasize applied statistical modeling for real data using computer software. Example, R or Minitab. Now, in my case, it was a regression course, and there were some other topics. We also had an ANOVA course that was separate. But in regression, we used only R. And then in ANOVA, we used only Minitab. But you have to be able to use both of these softwares, at least in school. In my job, I don't use Minitab. However, at school, I used R, I used Minitab. So you kind of have to have an idea about both of those. So if you're using R, you're definitely going to be using more programming. If you're using Minitab, it's a lot more point and click. But you still have to have some background in regression in either case. So your first here, at least at my university, not a lot of coding. But if we go through the rest of those, there is going to be a little bit more. We see we actually have a computer science class. And that's just to get a little bit more background in programming because a lot of applied statistics majors are eventually going to have to do a little bit of programming in their careers. So this is kind of some of the fundamentals of computer science. In my case, it was in Python, but this could be in C++. It could be in Java. There's a variety of cases. I actually took the C++ option way back when I had a different major completely, and I ended up dropping it but I retook it and it was in Python so that again is going to be some programming and a lot of your universities are probably going to try to fit in at least one or two computer science courses even if you're applied statistics major so just keep that in mind now finally the last kind of big hitter in terms of programming is the data science through statistical reasoning and computation course that I had to take now if you're going to be taking a statistics major you're likely going to have to be taking a data science class at some time and through this class I would really really hope that they're not only teaching you some sound statistical principles but they're they're also teaching you a lot of the code and programming that goes behind that because that's how you actually apply that knowledge to the real world. So in our case, again, this was in R, using a lot of diff different packages that are available in R, things such as XGBoost, Metrics, Carrot, a few others that I can't even remember the names of. But this class was kind of the culmination of all of my programming knowledge up to that point. And while there was other classes that definitely used R and I took things out of order compared to what you're seeing on here, it was definitely kind of putting everything that I had learned in R together to get through this class. So all in all, those are kind of like the core classes that are using programming, though you're going to have a ton of other statistics classes if your university uses R at least. You're going to have a ton of other statistics classes that are going to be using R. So it's kind of always going to be a part of your life as a statistics student, at least in my case. So now let's compare this to something like the statistics and computing option that my university offers. Now, if I could go back all over again and know that this was an option and know that data science was something that I wanted to get into, statistics and computing option would be something that I would go to. This is as close to a dual major in statistics and computer science as my university offers. I, I'm fairly certain of that. But really, you're taking a lot of those same core statistics classes, but instead of just throwing in one computer science course, you're actually getting a lot more. So you can see this first year, there's a lot of similarities. You got the STAT 184, that's the introduction to R class. 
you also see that we have that same computer science 131 class, which is that introduction to computer science kind of foundations. But then moving on, we see that we actually further that on with programming and computation too, which is data structures. That's another programming class, a class that computer science students have to take, of course. You can also see that later on we have some more comp sci classes. We have comp sci 221, which is object oriented programming, another concept that I'm sure computer science students are familiar with. And then finally, in our third year, we have data structures and algorithms. That's, of course, I've heard a lot of people complain about discrete mathematics for computer science. So not only are those people taking all of those programming classes that it kind of gets you familiar with a lot of those concepts that in computer science you also have a lot of the theory behind computer science in a major like this but like I said if I could go back I think this would be a great option because data science is kind of the culmination of statistics and computer science and applying technology to real world business problems so th this would definitely be an option for somebody who wants to get more of that programming route so obviously this kind of major is going to have a lot more coding than what I'm in and which is applied statistics right but what about somebody who wants to do statistics like pure mathematical statistics? Are they going to have to require a lot of programming? That's a great question. So you pull up the statistics. This is the graduate studies option. So it's geared towards somebody who wants to get a graduate degree in statistics, maybe do research, maybe become a professor. And, and just because you want to focus on pure statistics does not mean that you're going to lack, you know, some kind of programming or coding skills. Because even if you're doing research, you're still going to have to utilize something like R or Minitab. And, and that is kind of reflective in this degree as well. So you can see again, we have that stat 184. That's the introduction to R. We can see that we have stat 380, which is that data science through statistical reasoning and computation. Computer Science 131, again, introduction to computer science concepts. And we have a lot of those same classes. Now, we don't see a lot of other computer science or programming classes in this graduate option, but like I said, a lot of these statistics classes that you're seeing here, I also had to take as an applied statistics major, and a lot of those have R or Minitab or something similar, maybe SAS, baked into the class. So you might not get you know, a full programming or coding boot camp through these classes, but you're definitely going to start to understand how some of these programs and technologies work. So I'd say between applied statistics and the graduate option, statistics doesn't have a lot of programming, but you're definitely going to start to get familiar with those concepts, especially at MI University, you're going to learn a lot of R. At other universities, you might be using Python. But if you take something like the statistics and computing option, where you're taking a statistics and kind of computer science core curriculum put together, you're obviously going to be using a lot of programming. But watch this video next where I go over how much coding is actually in my job versus how much I did in school. It's actually super interesting. It's a longer video, but I think you're going to enjoy it, and I think you should watch that. So I'll see you guys over there.